Before we dive into today's video, if you wanna skip the talking head portion or you wanna skip ahead to something else, at the bottom of the video, you can scroll along and there's little chapter points. You can click any of those, it'll move you to there, or you can go in the description and there's little chapter points. That's in all of my newer videos. I try to put that so you guys can find what you're looking for a little bit faster. So if you wanna move ahead of something, you can do that. So a little preface to this video and some of the upcoming videos. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a spot into Modern Samurai's pistol course. Uh, thank you to Scott Jedlinski and AJ Zito for having me out and letting me record a lot of the course. And initially my plan was to give you guys kind of like a vlog style of my experience throughout the day of the three days at the course. But there was so much good information that I felt like it would be more beneficial to break that up into smaller sections to where I can show you guys this specific thing and then this specific thing and then you can come back and find those at any point. So if there's something specific you're looking for, whether it's uh, mechanics or grip or tracking the dot, whatever it is, you can kind of find those things in different videos as opposed to watching a, you know, hour or multi-hour long video to see all of those things and trying to find it. Coming into this video, this is gonna be video one of however many uh, that it takes for me to cover this course. Um, and the videos that I have won't cover everything that was in the course. There are some things in there that won't be covered simply because that's what Scott does for a living and if you really want all of it, go to the course. Uh, the second thing that I will say is that these videos ultimately do not replace the course itself. Um, what I would what I would recommend is that you use these a if you've never been to a course, use them as a as a reference to familiarize yourself with the concepts, some of the verbiage, and the things that Jedi talks about. There was a guy in the class who had never taken a course before. He had only watched videos online, specifically videos from Jedi, and he came to the course and was shooting lights out. So you can learn a lot, but there are some nuances, and there's a lot that you will only learn by being in person. A big part of what makes Modern Samurai and Jet, what Jedi does so different or so unique from a lot of other instructors is the amount of one-on-one -on -one coaching you get. He coaches you through everything, every little thing. When we go through iterations, he or AJ will come by and they will coach you specifically through each little thing to make sure that you're where you need to be. And they'll give you feedback constantly. And you'll see that in some of the videos um, as we go on, especially with myself, you'll see it from my perspective. You'll see them coaching me, but they did this with every shooter. And they will tell you, hey, we're not gonna pat you on the back and tell you good job. We're gonna coach you and tell you where you suck and help you get better. Um, and if you're doing something well, we're gonna coach you through that as well and say, hey, look, here's what you did well. Why did that do well? What were you doing that was right? So that way those things are ingrained. Coming into this course, I had two big expectations. One, I wanted to improve my concealed carry draw. I want to be more proficient with it. I want to run concealed more this year as opposed to running my range belt. Um, now there's a whole backstory to that that maybe we'll cover at a later date, but that was one of my goals. I want to be better with my concealed carry draw. Uh, and then two, I wanted to improve my recoil management specifically with my support hand. And that's something that I know Scott talks a lot about is what the support hand is doing in recoil. And I've been lucky to train with a lot of really good shooters and train with some of the best instructors in the country. And it's just still something that I've struggled with. So coming into this, it's something that I, that's, those are my two big goals. If I can fix those two things, this is gonna, this course will be a huge success for me. So you guys will see that journey. And once we get through all of these videos, again, however many that is, um, you guys will see at the end, I'll give a debrief and kind of where I'm at now in my shooting with the takeaways from this course. So with that long roundabout instruction, we're gonna go into, this isn't the very beginning of the course, this is, um, he, after he talks about a couple other things, we go into uh, mechanics or um, your technique and certain things, specifically in building structure to to mitigate recoil as opposed to using strength to mitigate recoil. And I'll let him talk about that. And at the end of it, I'll give kind of a debrief on my takeaway from this particular block of instruction. What's the great thing about the dot? It goes where you're looking. What's the shitty thing about the dot? It goes where you're looking, right? And while that may seem counterintuitive, if we are shooting iron sights the way it is classically taught, are we focused on what we are shooting? No, we're focused on a hard front sight, right? But that is not the way that we process visual information naturally, right? We have been dispatching evil things for 10,000 eons, threat target focus, right? Whether it be hands, feet, uh, rocks, knives, spears, bows, arrows, whatever, okay? Then we put these bumpy things on a semi-automatic pistol and then all that's gotta change. And then a technology comes along that lets us go back to one, uh, one focal plane shooting, but because we've been doing it the other way for so long, what do we say? Oh, this feels weird. Even though that's how we naturally focus uh, uh, visual information or process visual information. But vision also controls your speed, 
uh, your speed, your mobility, and your strength. Why? Because your eyes control your posture. Your posture controls everything else, right? For example, when I transition from one target to the next, what's the first thing that moves? Your eyes, because your body follows your eyes. Remember that theme, your body follows your eyes. So I'm 6'1", how much do you weigh? 260. Me too. Now I'm a little heavier than you, right? Right? But he's got, you know, he's got his uh, his uh, CrossFit variant shirt on, so he's a strong young lad, right? So we're gonna test out vision, okay? So do me a favor, you're right-handed. Mm -hmm. Put out your right arm for me. Look me straight in the eye. Do not let me press it down. Good. Straight in the eye. Don't let me press it up. Outstanding. Now, don't move anything on your body, especially your head, but your eyes to the ground. See how he just moved his head, <laughs> right? But wait, there's more. Eyes to the ground, don't let me push you down. Ready? Look at him, it was like a little girl. Like a, okay, now look at me, look up. Don't let me push you up. Look at him bloating up, it doesn't matter. How much strength I just take away by moving your eyes? I got 50% of it yeah. at least, right? Yeah. Thank you sir, appreciate you, right? That's where does this magic come from? Generally the first month in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So after you take your firearms class and after you take your medical class, then start taking jujitsu because you are not the meat eater you think you are unless you start doing jujitsu. Hard fucking stop. Stop lying to yourself. Do it now. Okay? Cool. I'll get off my high horse now. <laughs> All right. So that's number one, vision. Number two, let's talk about stance, okay? Who stands in isosceles when they're shooting? Feet even under their hips for the most part. Okay, there are 16 <laughs> of you that do that. We just seen it. So what that means is you don't know how you stand when you shoot. Can we agree, right, that shooting guns is serious business, yeah? And you guys have invested in a higher sighting system, right? And if I do say it myself, a higher level of training because you want to be a craftsman with your pistol. In order to be a craftsman with your pistol, you have to know every little thing of why you do every little thing, okay? The stance is your foundation when you first get started, right? So that being said, let me ask this once again, who stands in isosceles when you shoot like this? Raise your hand. What are you trying to control? Recoil. Recoil, that's why you do everything. That's why you stand a certain way, that's why you extend your arms, that's why you hold the gun a certain way, right? So let's optimize all that, right? Don't let me move you, okay? So isosceles is great, east, West, not so bueno, north, south. What did he have to do to stop himself from face planting? He took a step, right? So just take a step forward, heel perpendicular with toe, right there, okay? Don't load up the quad, don't do anything, just relax, okay? I just call this a fighter stance, right? So don't let me move you, okay? Fighter stance is still good, east, west, much better, north, south. Thank you, sir, appreciate you. Okay, do me a favor, face me. Yeah. Why don't you put your hands like this? Actually, let's stand kind of close so everybody see us. Face me, okay? Put your hands like this, I'm gonna put my hand in the middle right there. Crush it, crush it, good, hard, good. I'm gonna give him some feedback, right? Super tight, sucks for seeing sights though. So we're gonna relax, I'm gonna put my hand right to your eye line, put your hands around mine, okay? Uh, extend out just a little bit more, right there. Elbow's still bent, right at the eye line, crush it. Cool, so I'm just getting, no, keep on crushing. Good, just giving him some feedback and not trying to judo my way out of it. Just give him some feedback, still super tight. Now, lock out your elbows, crush it. Like a dolphin in mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's gonna haunt your dreams, y'all. You ain't never gonna forget it. One well, night you're gonna wake up out of it and say, oh, dolphin in mayonnaise. Your wife's like, what did you do in this class, right? How much strength I take when you locked out your elbows? I mean, 75%. 75% of it. So if his elbows are locked out, how could he possibly expect to hold on to a tiny explosion going off in his hands? I'm talking about his gun, by the way. Lock out your elbows again. Get your air gun out, lock out your elbows. Go ahead, get air gun it, like this. Air gun. <laughs> right there, right? That's the fucking 650 right there, okay? Right. Where's my, my fast coin? Yeah. There you go, All right. Lock out your elbows. Don't let me push you down. Ready? Womp. Got it. Now, okay, get your foot. Yeah. Now bend your elbows half an inch. That's half an inch in your house. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> Got it? Yeah. Don't let me push you down. How much you weigh, bro? 260. So you're 260, so I'm 290, right? I probably got an inch of height on you, right? So I have a very small, but still a leverage advantage, right? When he locked out his elbows, he could not resist me. The minute he came in and bent his elbows, right? I couldn't push him down. If my big ass couldn't push him down, the gun's not going to move. If the gun's not moving, 
the dots not moving. So how do we put this all together without wasting 60 cents a round down range? This is how. Michelle, come here. So how tall are you? I'm five foot one. Okay. And how much do you weigh? Uh, 110. 110. Okay. So I'm almost twice her height and twice her weight. Okay. You'll notice on the other demos, I try and pick big dudes. On this one, I pick a smaller person so that you know when you have the proper technique, right? It doesn't matter what the force is coming at you, right? So it's not good enough to know what the right answer is. You have to know why it's the right answer. So we're going to start from the shit show up. Okay. So face me. Stand in isosceles. Oh yeah, it's gonna hurt, just kidding. Here, slightly bent forward at the waist. Lock out your elbows. Cool. More forward. Forward, okay. Oh, oh. Just mitigate okay. recoil, okay? okay? Ready? Okay, relax for a second, okay? A little seizure there, that's okay. So it's not an anticipation problem, it's a patience problem. What's the opposite of patience? Impatience, which kind of looks like what people are doing. Okay, the other one is a structure problem, right? We need to take unstructured and make it structure, right? Funny thing, a lot of friends that work at the NYPD Academy and up there, everything is anticipation, okay? The guy shoots slow left, why? Anticipation. The guy's dog died, why? Anticipation, <laughs> right? Again, it's not an anticipation problem, it's a patience problem and it's a structure problem which we're gonna fix right now. Now here's the hardest part, okay? We're gun people, so we're alphas, and we think if a little work is good, a lot of work must be better. Not the case, okay? Relax, don't add any extra Taekwondo. Here we go. I changed it from Kung Fu to Taekwondo because she's Korean, get it? Okay, here we go, ready? Oh, sorry. Ready? Yep. That, more work or less work? Less work, and if we can do less work, yeah. I know. If we can do less work to get better, oh my God, we can get a lot better, right? And if I'm twice her height and twice her size, keeping the same amount of impulse on the thing and she goes from being moving all over the place to not moving at all, if my big ass can't move her, a small nine millimeter gun ain't gonna move her. Make sense? Cool. Thank you, Michelle. Appreciate you. Recoil doesn't push, it slaps. It's a sharp impulse. That's what nice recoil does, right? So if we apply it properly, we get the result from it. So here's the only, this is the only time in class I'm gonna have you focus on the dot, right? Everything else is target focus, right? In order to not be hypocritical, I remove the target, right? Plus, if I had you guys shooting urgently into a target, right? What would you judge no matter what? <laughs> your hits and your groups, right? So you may get to that perfect position where the dot's not moving anymore, then you bring down the gun, you go, ooh, line break and forget everything, right? So I'm removing that difficulty, okay? So we're gonna go through about six relays of this. Each, each iteration is six rounds, okay? When we get done, you're gonna holster up, turn around, and then I'm gonna pick random people and you're gonna tell me what the dot did in relation to the window. Tell me what the dot did. Okay, did it go up and you lost it, down and you lost it? Did it go from 11 to uh, five, two to seven, circle? Especially tell me if you ever lost the dot, because it's kind of critical that you lost your sighting system, okay? I need you shooting at the same urgent pace. Why do I say urgent instead of fast? I don't say fast or slow. Your body doesn't understand what fast or slow means in terms of miles per hour, right? So I use terms like urgent or careful, okay? Um, what does that mean? Figure it out. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example of what urgent means. Okay, cool, awesome. All right, guys, so we're gonna be right here at the three yard line. Let me demo this for you first. This is the pace in which I want you shooting, okay? Now, here's the deal. If you had to uh, dim the dot down, I want you to bring the brightness back up. I don't want the dot blooming though. I need it nice and clear, right? So I need six rounds at about this pace or as close as you can get to it. Make sense? Cool, awesome. All right, everybody, stand in isosceles. Bend forward at the hip. Lock your elbows out. <laughs> On target, six terrible. rounds, ready. Up! <laughs> Toe. Got it? Okay, stand upright. Lock out your elbows. Six rounds, ready. Lock out your elbows, Jim. I know it's hard. Uh, ready, up! We good? Okay, lead foot forward, heel perpendicular with toe. Uh, purple shirt, eggplant guy. Put your, your lead foot more forward, heel perpendicular with toe. Got it? Cool. Go to lockout. 
and then bring it back half an inch or where you regularly bend your elbows before you came to the class. Six rounds. Ready? Up! There you have it. There was Jedi's block of instruction on using structure instead of strength to mitigate recoil. And in that block of instruction, the one thing that came to mind was the story of Jack Nicholas. When I was learning to play golf, one of the things he talked about how he only had one coach his like pretty much his entire career as a golfer. And from a very early age, even through his pro career, the one thing they would always work on is every time he would go back for a lesson, the very first thing they would do is work on body position and alignment. And so they, you know, in golf, you have to make sure that your toes, your knees, your hips, your shoulders are all aligned um, with your target path or your the path you're aiming on for your swing path. So that way you're not trying to compensate somewhere in your swing and it allows you to, to swing more freely without having to make any weird extra movements to keep the, the ball on target. And I think the same is true with shooting. And I think that's what a, a lot of what Scott was getting at was that if, if our mechanics, if we're structurally sound, then it's a lot easier when we're shooting. And one of the things that I found since the course and since working on some of those things that he talked about and refining them was um, although my, my foot position was good, my arms were good, everything else was good, one of the things that I realized was that my hips were slightly rotated to the left. And whenever what I would present, I was always presenting the gun to the left. The dot would always be come out of the top, but it would be on the left. And I couldn't figure out why until I started working through from the ground up, like he talked about. And when I realized my hips were pointed that direction, it made sense why the gun was going that direction. So once I straightened that out, when I started working on my draw again, it was coming on target in the center of the window and it was so much simpler, so much faster. And I didn't feel like I need, needed to uh, overconfirm my sights because I knew it was coming to that spot because it was predictable, it was more consistent. And like he talked about being three steps ahead, that little tweak of just rotating my hips just a few degrees to the right so that they were on target made a huge difference in my draw. And that's something that I worked on in the few days after the class. But that's one of those things where we go back to the foundation, we go back to the mechanics, the structure from the ground up to make sure all those things are right. Because in, if not, what ends up happening and what I did was I was compensating in my grip. I was compensating in my presentation and it was slowing me down. It wasn't as efficient. It wasn't as smooth. Um, and it, I couldn't go as quickly um, or shoot as soon as I wanted to because I just wasn't seeing the dot as soon as I wanted to. And so I think this is a big thing. Even if we're seasoned shooters, something we need to consistently go back to. And if you're a newer shooter, getting that good foundation like Jack Nicholas talked about from the very beginning is the, the way to go because it'll set you up for success. If you have a bad foundation, you have to unlearn that and then relearn the correct thing and then always coming back to check it. So yeah, that, that was a big takeaway for me and something that I learned and was working through. And it made a huge difference, especially in the little things when we were, you know, they show, he, he doesn't just tell you the right answer like he talked about. It's not enough to know the right answer. You have to understand why it's the right answer. And going through all the examples where he has you work through, you know, why we, we put our arms this way, why we stand this way, why our feet are this way, all those little things give you more confidence in your ability to perform because you're like, okay, this is correct, this is correct. It's like going down the checklist. Um, you, you know that all these things are correct, so you are confident going into that draw and that presentation when you're on target. So the next video, I believe, is gonna be grip, so stay tuned for that. Um, I know this was a long video, but there's a lot of really good information that I didn't wanna cut out. So, uh, but stay tuned, we've got a ton more. This is just one block from three days of instruction. Uh, if there's something specific you guys are curious about, leave it down in the comments below. Um, and yeah, so thank you again to Jedi. Make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. Also, I will link Jedi down below. Um, I'm sure you've already seen his tag in the video, but yeah, you know, you know. Just looking at gas prices. I'm straight up not having a good time right now. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay, feels much better. Do you want to say hi? Yes. Dang, you're white. You're like overexposed. I just noticed how blown out you were in the... <laughs> what is that? Can you say hi to everybody? They haven't seen you in a while. Okay. Say hi. Hi. You, you tell them about your Lego Minecraft? You show them what happened to your lip.
Yeah, did you show me what happened to your lip at school? school? What happened? You were bleeding. You were bleeding? Mm 